analysts have significantly discussed the idea of an Airbus A380neo, and Emirates, the largest operator of the A380-800, is driving the dialogue. The concept, primarily driven by the airline's president Sir Tim Clark, involves a re-engined version of the A380-800, which would be equipped with more fuel-efficient engines, among other changes. These changes would address some of the original model's inefficiencies, which led to its decline and the cease of production. These improvements would reduce fuel burn by up to 12-14%. to 14%. Emirates' day-to-day -day operations make sense for an A380neo, given its reliance on aircraft such as the Dash 800. The airline has really built its operation and brand around the Super Jumbo. Additionally, Emirates hasn't been afraid to discuss its belief that growing passenger numbers and increasingly congested airports will eventually require airlines to revisit high-capacity aircraft. A more efficient A380 would allow Emirates to keep its hub-and-spoke model effectively and move large volumes of passengers through Dubai while keeping per-seat costs competitive, even if it relies somewhat on twin-engine jets. Despite this, Airbus has shown no interest in developing an A380neo, and the reasons go far beyond a simple lack of demand and Emirates' $20 billion offer to the plane maker. Firstly, the A380 was designed to revolutionise air travel, compete with Boeing, and as well try and mitigate some of the sales that we had seen the 747 program enjoy for so long. However, Airbus's hopes for this program was arguably not ever really fulfilled to its full potential as airlines' strategies began to shift, and coupled with the premise of the A380 and its four-engine nature, it made the operating expenses of this plane when fuel prices only continue to fluctuate a bit of a problem. Additionally, it was restricted to the number of airports due to its size and the airlines that had a route that was able to take on such a plane. When you're considering the advancements of next generation aircraft, well, this compounded the issues for the 380. They found airlines were finding more ways to be adaptable and flexible, planes that offered far less risk. Despite its popularity among passengers, we know the A380's production ceased in 2021. Emirates, however, continued to firmly push for an updated version even at the beginning of this year, stating it had submitted designs to the plane maker for what an A380neo according to them would entail. However, Airbus firmly believes that an A380neo is not a viable project and one of those main reasons for this decision is the immense financial and logistical challenge that is present when you consider restarting production. When production comes to a close for any aircraft type, it is the end of a chapter and new opportunities will emerge, but so much is torn down, and more often than not, the space in which we saw an aircraft produced that is no longer, we'll see that space find a new home. That's exactly what has happened with the A380 program. So to bring that back to life with only one airline interested and limited market case for it, and certainly a significant amount of money that would need to be invested, let alone resources that would take away from other valuable programs, it just doesn't seem worth it. Another key reason Airbus has ruled out that A380neo is just because, like I touched on before, Emirates alone can't justify the program. While Emirates operates over 100 units and sees value in an upgraded version, the lack of interest from other airlines means Airbus would struggle to break even on development costs. Aircraft programs require a broad customer base to be financially viable, and no other airline has expressed serious interest in a next-generation 380 and views the A380 model as, say, a long-term solution. It's more so viewed as a short-term solution as many companies navigate supply chain complexities and cannot take delivery of their next-generation twin-engine planes on time. They are simply relying on an A380-like aircraft to get them through carrying demand between locations. Like Emirates, like I touched on at the beginning of this video, has said it submitted designs and believes $20 billion would ensure that Airbus would build the plane, but that's not a given and Airbus has yet to publicly entertain these comments comments. Especially when you consider for Airbus, they have new focuses within their program. I'll begin with some of your smaller aircraft, and that is including the A321neo family. Your latest derivative in the XLR, which launched at the end of last year, has really highlighted that single aisle limitations are no longer present, and the addition of the XLR into airlines' fleets is opening up many new opportunities that were not previously possible in an efficient and also profitable manner. Furthermore, this is limiting the need for wide bodies at some airlines. They feel they can just rely on the A320 
Ferrari 21 XLR and meet some of your more secondary markets, which would be a first. So instead of moving ahead with an ultra large capacity airliner, they're focusing on things such as these. And I could stretch that towards the A350 family, which is seeing two new variants come to light in the upcoming years and also the many other internal studies that are taking place to determine what their next commercial airliner is going to look like. And, and it will likely not be an A380neo type plane. What does all of this mean for Emirates? Well, with Airbus unwilling to develop the A380neo, at least publicly, Emirates will eventually have to re retire its flagship plane without a direct successor. To adapt, Emirates is already looking to diversify its fleet. The airline has placed pretty hefty orders for the A350-900 and the 779, while also looking to the Dreamliner. And while, yes, these planes are smaller, they are going to allow, at the very least, Emirates to serve more routes without the financial risks of filling a super jumbo. That's not to say that it has this present, but we know that these smaller planes offer them a great deal of flexibility. And while Emirates is betting on the 777X to be its next flagship, it still is not the perfect replacement to the A380. On paper, it should be a success, however, even despite the delays. Diversification will be key, but Emirates will remain committed to the A380 for many, many more years. In fact, the airline, based on its latest guidance, says that it expects to retain the jet until the early 2040s, likely meaning it will be the last operator of the world's largest passenger plane, and some would say, including myself, fittingly. So to conclude, the A380neo remains a conceptual aircraft driven by Emirates. That is why it is truly such a fascinating plane to explore, because seemingly when you think it's all down and out and there's no discussion around it, in an interview, unsurprisingly, Sir Tim Clark will come forward and say once more that he believes an A380neo needs to be launched. It's not necessarily that of the plane maker driving this dialogue. At this stage, the manufacturer seems to have no interest in visiting this project. The same forces that led to the original A380's decline, including your high operating costs, limited demand, and the rise of other planes still exist today in 2025. Nothing has really changed. And furthermore, Airbus has other priorities that it's moved on to, focusing on the genuine next generation of flight and ramping up production of its existing planes, which, unlike the A380, actually had customers and people willing to commit to it. For Emirates, the absence of an A380neo means they have to adapt to a future without the all-important beloved Super Jumbo, which, like I said, we retired in the 2040s. That is still some time away, and a lot can change. While it may not be an A380neo, there may be a requirement at that point for some other kind of high-capacity, efficient plane. Who knows where high hydrogen powered planes will head and whether this can be adopted on a larger scaled plane and, and that is perfect for Emirates that flies in two slot restricted airports. Time will only tell but the Dubai based carrier is going to need to see its strategy evolve and I personally feel that will be fascinating to follow. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Thank you very much for your support here on the channel. Please take care, do be safe and I'll see you in a couple of days for your latest industry analysis right back here on Globetrotting. And we'll